Okay, I'll, I'll get into a, a couple more details about myself at the end, but somebody during this conference was, was telling me, you know, it, it, to me it's really important that you actually have a, a corporate business background. I was interested in that, so just to tell you that I was CEO of Club Med Japan. I set up Coors, the brewing company in Japan, things like that. So when I talk about social media, I'm talking from a business perspective. And when I, I, so I deal with branding with my clients and with social media from, from that perspective. Everyone in this room, I think it is important for you to have a personal brand. I'm not sure you think so, even though you're working for somebody else right now. Actually, most of you are, are independent. But your brand, whether you are taking care of it or not, exists. Yes. And it's online. Yes. You leave a snail trail everywhere you go, even though you don't realize it. So try Googling yourself now and then and see what's out there. So it is better to manage your personal brand. And of course, you should manage the brand of your company if you're doing a startup or running any kind of a company. So this is a MindJet Mind Manager. I've been taking notes all through this conference using these maps. And a couple of people have asked me, hey, what is that you're using? So I just want to tell you what it is. It's a drop and drag program. It's really, really easy to use. I'm, I've been using it for many years. It's, it's wonderful. I use it for everything. So I use it for planning websites with clients. We sit down, and the first thing we do is we go through their, their personal brand and the, the brand that they're trying to project for this web, the website that they're working on. And it's really important. And it, it really brings out things like, what do you want to emphasize in the website? So you come at it from a strategic point of view, and people really like that. So these are the elements of, of things that you should be looking at when, when you're doing branding. And to think about for social media. So social media is not just tactical. You have to decide which platforms are right for you and how to use them and what you're trying to accomplish. Many of you have a website. I built a Twitter list at the beginning of this for people who are participating in WordCamp LA. And I was searching for your Twitter handle on some of your websites. And I have to tell you that it's not necessarily easy to find. So be careful about that. Make sure, and, and it's always the cobbler's children's uh, children have no shoes yeah. situation, yeah. right? So your, your clients' websites are perfect, right? But for our own websites, just make sure that you show up on your website. Make sure that your social handles are easy to find on your website. That is, is very important. And um, make sure that your own websites are, are optimized. So you've been hearing about SEO Yoast in, in several different presentations. It's a fabulous plugin. I highly recommend it. Use it on your own websites and make sure that you optimize your own website so that you can be found. And of course, you should have share buttons. So you know, even if you're not blogging on there, although you know, we can all be, try to become a Chris Lemma, but <laughs> even if we can't, you know, a couple of blogs keeps it fresh and keeps Google coming there. Whatever you use, at least use some share buttons. I recommend Simple Share Buttons Plus, which is a really, really nice light button. Um, and uh, I found that Shareaholic and Share This and Add This all scrape your content and, to, and scrape your results to build a database for themselves. And it's really, really heavy because they're constantly going back and forth on, on your site for that. So you don't want to use those. Am I? Oh, I'm not in the thing. Oops. Thank you. Oh, oh, what I said. <laughs> so, oh, could I repeat that? Not speak up. So the scraping. So, Shareaholic, and share this and add this. They are taking your results in in what's getting shared, and then they're making a, a big database out of it and feeding it back to other clients. So. Um, who pay for it. So this, this particular button is very light and uh, can, can be styled and so forth. And if you've seen tweets coming through, they, they're doing a, light, a nice little offer for just for, for you guys. Um, make sure that you own your name everywhere. 
So even though you don't want to be on Twitter yet, it'd be really a good idea to grab your handle so, and put a nice little bio on there, some, something, so you know, wh where your website is and so forth, even if, just so that you have it, so somebody else can't take it. Marketing, so we're marketing ourselves. Marketing itself has not changed from the days of Mad Men. We're still marketing. We're just doing it online. We still need to be clever. We still need to understand what our brand is. The elements of traditional marketing are still there. We still have to have customer service. We still need to understand who our competition is. All of those elements, we just drop in our online reputation and the elements of social media. So today, as, as you've noticed, a lot of companies are actively doing customer service through social media. So it, it, um, it started with Comcast Cares in my world. That's, that's the, where I feel that it started. Everybody saw these guys very, very actively reacting to customers online and saying, I'm, we'll be at your house later, or come, what can we do for you? We, thank goodness we've solved this. And that was, that, those were really the first guys that, that were active. And Frank Ellison has made a wonderful career out of that. He started out as this little guy at Comcast Cares, now is in, in charge of everything at, at Citibank and social media. And, um, and now everybody has to do it. So all the airlines do it. If you're not happy, tweet it. It's a one good, I know a lot of you are not, you really don't want to be active on Twitter. If, if anything, do it to get help from people because they have no choice if you start tweeting because it's very visible, okay? <laughs> yeah. um, what is social media? I think most of you know what it is, but just in case, I feel blogs, and of course on WordPress, is the, the, the central part of your social media program. It's, it's where you're getting content and, and bringing people back and forth between the social media and between the, the content that you're producing. Then you have social networks and location-based search. You have LinkedIn, which is trying very hard to be a, a social network. <laughs> There's, it's, it's been very interesting watching them develop. It's like, I'll talk about permalinks later. In every, every social post has a permalink. All you have to do is click on the date stamp, except LinkedIn. So, you know, you can't, you can't say, I posted this. Here's where it was. There is no date stamp. The date stamp does nothing. Um, and, and then you have, of course, the, the popular Instagram and so forth. Everything works together. And the pin of all that is Google. Google is always the giant, and things revolve <laughs> around it. Um, but they, they interact with each other as well. If you're going to be on social media as a company, and you should, you have to be ready to react and interact. Yes. This is not a one way. You are not a newspaper. <laughs> you are not a billboard. You, this is social. People are expecting responses and they are expecting it fast. So if you're going to put up a Facebook page, be ready to answer questions. Be ready to answer complaints. Same thing with Twitter. All of these, all of these social media networks are expecting responses from you. And you also can use them as listening platforms. You can look, listen and find out what's happening in your industry. You, you can see if people are talking about you. You can always monitor for your, for your own handle on everything. So you should be listening both for yourself and your competitors. OK, I have a company. There's two of us or three of us, but none of us wants to do social media. So what are we going to do? Maybe you have somebody that you use part time. Just be really careful about how you do that because whoever does the posting is representing your voice. Think about who you're using. A lot of people like to use young people. Oh, I can use my nephew. I can use my this, this college kid because they're a digital native. The magic word is digital native. That doesn't mean they know anything about your business or business or strategy or that they weren't drunk last night and might 
you've, I'm sure you've heard about some of the famous mistakes that have been made in social media. Like somebody, a lot of people manage their um, tweets off of Hootsuite and you can have different accounts and you can accidentally, you think you're tweeting from your own and tweet from somebody else's if you're not paying attention. So get an A-type personality working for you if you're gonna do that, somebody who doesn't have typos and misspellings and that will make sure they're on your account when they're supposed to be on your account because <laughs> that's really important. Um, and outsourcing, there are companies, this is what they do for a living. Be, be careful with that. Um, just, you know, I'm expert at, at uh, doing social media for this certain industry and you look and you see and they're, they're kind of posting the same thing for everybody and you know, I've especially noticed it like with dentists and things like that, you know, it's just so bland. And so it's really worth it to do it yourself if you can, or at least somebody close in the company that, that's at least working for you part-time or something like that. In terms of what it's gonna take, yes. The black box. The black box. The black box to me refers the most to SEO guys. You know those guys who once you have a website, send you an email, you get like two a day of those. I just realized that why are you not on the first page? What's wrong with you? Your website's all messed up, you really need me. And then they're gonna charge you $1,000, $2,000 a month to fix everything and get you to number one on, on the page. But they're gonna do it all in a magic way that you have no idea what they did. And when you stop paying them, it disappears. And it, it, because you don't know what they did, you can't keep it up. So personally myself, when I work with people, if I'm working on, on do, doing a website or, or social media, whatever I'm doing, I kind of make them learn it, if, if I can, if there's that kind of client, I try to make them learn it with me so that they're, they're educated at the end and they can do it themselves. So, you know, as yourself, try and avoid the black box. Anybody that you hire to help you with something, ask them to tell you what they're doing, how they're doing it. How did they figure out what hashtags to use for you? What, what are they, you know, how do they get to your keywords? And you should be doing it with them. You know your key, you can help do keywords better than anybody. And keywords work not just in SEO, they work all across social media. So you need to participate. And, you don't want to pay somebody to go off and do something and you don't know what they did. That's a black box. So how long does this take? I would say a minimum of an hour a day. And if you're managing somebody, if you, you really, if you're gonna have this part-time person or something, you don't want to just never look and see what they're doing. You, you should allocate at least 15 minutes a day to, to, to look and see what's going on. Um, the other things that have to go on is, is you need content, so it's really nice to have some sort of editorial calendar. All of us participate in events. If you're going to word camps, if you're speaking, if you're going to trade shows, whatever it is that you're doing can be part of social media. And when you come to these things, for heaven's sakes, get online and participate. Bridget mentioned to me that she Notice that there were people who were here with a speaker and they weren't taking pictures of them and they didn't have their computer out to tweet about what they were saying. Why? You're here to be seen, you're here to promote yourself, you're here to network and meet people and of course it's all great that we're doing this in person, which we should, but take advantage of doing it online as well. And finally, the, re the reminder to be responsive. That takes time. You have, to, you have to go back and check. So which platforms should you be using? You take a look at what your business looks like, and I'm gonna run quickly through um, the big social networks, and we'll talk about which is appropriate for what. Obviously, on the, uh, the prof professionals and executives, for whatever it is, LinkedIn is a good place to be. So you don't want to ignore that one. Why YouTube? YouTube, owned by Google, is a search engine. It's a very good search engine. And it behooves you to have content there. You can ha just get somebody to do a video of you talking about 
what you do. There, there's all kinds of things that you can do. It it's not, doesn't need to be a talking head. There are screencasts using ScreenFlow, Camtasia, um, various tools that you can use to create screenshots and explain to people, ex pull people through things and get that on YouTube. Th those are very popular kinds of findings, pe how-to, tutorials. People love that on YouTube. And I think we are that kind of crowd where we like to teach and we, we have <coughs> special knowledge. So that is uh, something that is very useful. Your phone. Your phone, everywhere you go, you have your phone. And your phone is a camera. So when you take a video, just, you know, don't do this. <laughs> just go very slowly. And you can take great videos. You can load it to YouTube right from your phone. Um, make sure to put some tags on it. And um, in general, on, when you load on YouTube, just m make sure you put as much as you can in the description if you can get all the way to um, almost a transcript is best because it's a search engine. So any words that you put are likely to be found. And always make sure that you have a link at the top of that description. It could be a link to the particular page that you're talking about is the best. Um, but make sure that you have an extra link in there. Don't expect them to go searching around on your YouTube for another link. YouTube shows up really nice on Twitter. I know there's now native Twitter videos. But the advantage of getting people to your YouTube is because it's a search engine, the more views you have, and if you can get people to subscribe, that's huge. That builds up your search rankings in YouTube. Get those subscriptions. Um, so you want to pull people to your YouTube when you can. Um, and of course, it's going to look great on Google+, because Google owns YouTube, uh, YouTube, so they make it look gigantically beautiful when it's on Google+. On Facebook, they hate Google. So on Facebook, <laughs> if you're going to do a video, I recommend that you take the same video that you loaded up onto YouTube and load it up to Facebook native. Twitter owns Vine, which looks really snazzy on um, Twitter and on a website as well. And, but for advertisements and special promotions, then it would make sense to use the native Twitter video. Why Google Plus? Is anybody on Google Plus here? Yes. <laughs> oh, yay. OK, good. So being developers, <laughs> you've probably noticed that there's this Google authorship thing. And so you realized you had to set it up for some clients and that, that, that you ought to be on it yourself. So it really makes sense to build your author credibility um, the other thing is the feed is less filtered than Facebook on Google. Uh, Facebook wants you to pay for, for things to, to get seen, whereas Google doesn't, they, they do some preferential things. They like really pretty pictures. Those go through better. And as Brianna was, was talking about the OG tags, that, that's going to help. I just mentioned Brianna. And so no, no, anybody who's didn't go or is watching this video later, Brianna Privet just gave a wonderful presentation on Twitter cards and uh, Pinterest rich pins and buy pins. And it's very much related to what I'm talking about. Make sure to see her presentation when it's on um, WordPress.tv. The Google Plus audience is male, heavily male. I'm there too, and so is Bridget <laughs> and, and, and many of you in the audience. but. You can think about these. You know, what is it that you're you're trying to accomplish? It's good to know. It's good to know who's there. It's much more intellectual than Facebook, and business pages can participate in communities. You know that as a Facebook page, you can't you can't talk to anybody in a, in a personal profile. You can't um, reach out into a group, but a Google page can go anywhere. So that's that's very powerful. And, and you should take advantage of that. Don't forget about Google My Business Pages. So you may not even have heard of this word because you might remember Google Places. Then there was local business pages for Google. And now it's called Google My Business Pages. So, but it's the same thing. It's, what's really important about them <laughs> is that this is a personal page. And uh, this is a Google My Business page, is that they have reviews. And those reviews show up when you search. So the important thing to have a Google My Business page, if you have an address that you can put online, 
that's legitimate, is that you, you rank higher in search because you get shown on a map and the people can give reviews and hopefully you get good reviews. They didn't really like this Porsche place very much. I, tr I tried to find something in LA. I have a bunch of things from Kauai. I didn't think you'd find that so fascinating. Um, and this is a Google Plus brand page. But I think there's a, an advantage of concentrating on your Google My Business page and get that going with lots of posts. You, you can post just like you can on a brand page and make that the, the robust page for yourself to get those reviews up. Why Pinterest? Pinterest does a really good job of driving sales and, and links back to your website. This is a 70-30 women. Um, in this crowd, I thought you'd be interested to know that Pinterest users are interested in design. So if you talk, if, if you have boards that talk about how to do design and so forth, you're going to attract the men that are on Pinterest as well. And um, it's, it's a good platform. Um, Instagram, a lot of companies are using this to build awareness, but just keep in mind they can't put any links into Instagram. So that's, that's really not that helpful for traffic itself. And that's what Pinterest looks like. On Instagram, just mentioning that there are some business things that you can do online, offline with, with Instagram. Warble Parkey has done a really good job. Why Twitter? So we're going to spend the most time on Twitter. I'm going to give you some specific Twitter tips because some people have made some um, requests about that. Why Twitter? First of all, you can use it to build a network of, of people in your industry. Um, you're going to need it for customer service. On content marketing, do watermark your stuff. This is for everything. Um, if you're not watermarking your images yet, you really should be. I have a gigantic article on boomertechtalk.com on why you should watermark and why you should properly give credit when you use images and where to get images and so <laughs> forth. So um, I recommend that you take advantage of that. And I also have an article about iWatermark Plus, which is only $3.99 for your phone. And it's does all kinds of watermarks. It does arcs, it, 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 it watermarks video, it, it's very flexible and easy to use, and but that's for mobile uh, watermarking. And event marketing, we talked about participating. Um, that's usually where everybody is, is on Twitter for an event. Who here knows what their clout score is? Okay, great. Does anybody know what clout is? <laughs> Okay, so that's what I figured out when I was talking to people, so I figured I really should explain to you about cloud. So when you set up a Twitter account, by default, it assigns you a cloud score. And even though you're not aware what it is, it's showing up. And it's based on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, LinkedIn. They just added YouTube and Foursquare. And it's more visible than you think. It, it, a lot of people use, the people who are in marketing, are people who might want to give you money for some reason, brands, those kind of people, use br clout extensions that show, you see that this shows, this 47 clout score shows up right here on WP Shout's Twitter account. The reason this is happening is they have not linked to anything but Twitter. So all you have to do, because it's the default, it just gave you a score, all you have to do is sign in to clout.com using your Twitter account, go to settings, and the te go to networks, and then add the other networks so that they'll also be feeding your other networks that you're active on. Same thing with uh, Visual Rhythm, who gave this fabulous presentation, these gorgeous charts, this fabulous guy, and he doesn't, he doesn't know what a cloud score is, and he's got a 31 cloud score. And you know, oh, I know. And it's only because it's only going to Twitter. So I did, I did. <laughs> I didn't know, I, I was hoping he was gonna be here today. <laughs> oh, he is there. Oh, there you are. 
I, you were saying good. You had so many goodbyes. Thank you for all, uh, on your on your um, on your on Twitter. I thought you left. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna fix this. You know what to do now, right? Okay. <laughs> so here's what happened. This is Hootsuite. Most people are using Hootsuite for Twitter. Most people are using Hootsuite, and a couple of things I'm going to show you why they're using Hootsuite. It's just much easier to, to use Twitter when you're using this tool, and it is a free tool unless you start doing Teams. Um, but you see that the Clout score is right here, and it's baked into your bio, and everybody sees it. That's Facebook, not here. Okay. This is fine. I think I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly. I'll come back to no, understand your question. You're correct. You're correct. I just wasn't sure what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, you're talking about third-party posting. Yeah, you don't want to use this to. Yeah, just it's much better to, to post natively. So, um, but for Twitter, it's fine to use Hootsuite. So anyway, everybody sees your bio on Hootsuite, and there it is right there. So just be careful about that. Um, so some Twitter, ti Twitter tips. So um, this is the gentleman that I'm, that's in the other room. Uh, and it's too bad that we couldn't be in each other's room, so I want to see his too. But um, he's leaving out at mentions. So he has my name, Linda Sherman, but he doesn't have at Linda Sherman. So the only reason I saw this is because Bridget retweeted it. Otherwise, I would have never known that he tweeted anything for me. So when you tweet about somebody or a company or something, at mention them so that they appreciate it, and also it boosts their cloud score. So they appreciate it more. Now, here's an interesting thing that he's doing. And he's, he's, at the same time that he's saying that he's presenting at WordCamp, he's saying, come on down. We're doing yoga at the distillery, which is not here. <laughs> so, you know, be present. If, 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 don't let pe if you're going to do scheduled things and post things that you're not really there, make sure that uh, you say it in a different way. So I, how, did I, how do you find your at mentions when, when people mention you? In notifications. They show up in your notifications like this, along with who's followed you, who's favorited you, who's put you on a list. Your notifications are very useful. And this is the UI for your notifications. Um, you can see that it's up here. You have home notifications and private messages. You just click on notifications, and you get that page that I just showed you. Hashtags. Hashtags are very important. This is how people that don't already follow you can find you. So use a, a, a hashtag or a couple of hashtags. Obviously, they're very important for events. And when you, if you ever get involved in organizing an event, make sure that you only have one hashtag that everybody knows what it is. Put it on all of the announcements and, and so forth and make, so that everybody can participate. And to find out what are good hashtags, you can research in Twitter. There's a little search thing at, on the top of Twitter. Use that and find out what hashtags work. Um, I, I have a client that is a nonprofit. And so it, there's all kinds of different ways of saying things about nonprofits, like pay it forward and so forth. And I look to see what the competitors are doing to get ideas. And then I look to see how much action there is on, on those. Now, creating hashtags, you notice the last hashtag I have here is the name of the client, which is I Have a Dream Foundation Los Angeles, I had love. And we have created that to the point that enough people are using it that, that it, it works. When you make a hashtag, if you're the only person that ever uses it, well, it's not terrible, but you know, try and get it, it's got to have some momentum. And, and it's really, and make sure that it's not for something else. So sometimes when people do an event, you have to, they, they make a couple of letters or something, and you realize that it's actually a motorcycle gang that's using that hashtag. So you really need to check and see what um, is happening with those hashtags. Do not auto-share Instagram on Twitter. 
share your Instagram on Instagram, and if you want to share photos on Twitter, share them in Twitter.com. That's where you share your photos. That's how they look good. Don't share them through Hootsuite. Share them on, go when you're going to share a photo, do it through Twitter.com. Because this is what it looks like. You can't see any photo. It's a complete waste. And don't ever run your Facebook into Twitter. So, oh, I don't have any time. i got to have some content on my Twitter. I'll just run my Facebook into my Twitter. Well, this is what you get. Nobody's ever going to, to engage with any of these posts. You know, and in the worst case, it's I posted a photo on Facebook kind of show. Those are awful, right? <laughs> and then people never go back to check. Right? That you, you know that they're totally automated when you have things like this because they never go back to check because why would you leave these things? An important thing that, uh, that Twitter is, uh, Hootsuite is useful for is to run columns for different Twitter lists. Bridget created several really useful lists for this conference. We have um, attendees, speakers, volunteers, sponsors, all in different lists. Look at WordCamp LA and you'll see um, it's at WordCamp LA, LAX, LAX like the Air Force. at WordCamp LAX, and you'll see all of the um, Twitter lists. And also, I did my own Twitter list, but <laughs> that was before I realized she was already. But I also have 92 other Twitter lists that are kind of interesting. So, um, back channel. What is this back channel? When, when I was showing you um, how, how your uh, Twitter looks on the user interface, you have tweets, which is your front timeline, and then you have tweets and replies, which is kind of a back channel because it doesn't show on the top of your Twitter. And the reason is because that's each, each tweet starts out with an at mention. So don't do this if you want people to see it. If you don't want people to see it, except the person you're tweeting to and the other people who follow them, then, <laughs> then put it, put it this way. And Marsha Collier, if you want to learn how to tweet, just watch at Marsha Collier. She's a genius, okay? And uh, she comes by her 85 clout very honestly. So the, she does a lot of little chatting, thanking people in the back, but she doesn't put it in her stream because it would bore everybody, right? These are little chitty chatty things. Don't put those on your mainstream. Put things of substance on your mainstream. Um, you can put four images on Twitter now. Types of retweets. This is new and fun. You can comment now. So you have a tweet, and you can, when you go to retweet, it gives you the option of adding a comment. If you're, I see somebody's laughing, somebody read it. <laughs> um, so this, this happened today, this happened eight minutes ago. This happened like at 1230 today. <laughs> Um, and uh, it's, it's pretty funny. So um, the, if, you're on, if you're not on native Twitter, you can get it from, uh, if you want to do it on Hootsuite, get the permalink by clicking on the time. You would click on the eight minutes. That gives you the permalink for the tweet, and you can add it to a tweet, and then, and then it shows up the same way with, with your comment. And Ray tells me, am I completely out of time? Oh. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> okay, but we had such a slow start. Twitter chats run through Hootsuite. Do you do Twitter chats? Make sure you participate in CussServe, that's Marsha Collier, at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays, and Blog Chat on uh, Sundays at 6 p.m. Both of these are gigantic Twitter chats. You'll meet a lot of people. On Blog Chat, you'll meet um, bloggers. On Customer Service, you'll, on CussServe, you'll learn about customer service, which is useful, and I have to get off. Oh, I actually was done. Didn't I? Mm. So, so, so just a second. So this is my last slide. This is this is all my stuff, and you can come up and get. I have lots of cards, so you can get a card. I'm going to put my slides on lindasherman.me/wordcamp. Right now, it's a post, and it has some uh, live blogging about this wordcamp. It's originally about wordcamp Miami. It's a little bit of a mishmash, but it's. Um, it's, I'm going to put it there because it talks about my presentation for now. <laughs> yes? It's on lindasherman.me slash wordcamp. <laughs>